beware the manic pixie dream girl trope come to life and she's deadly season one episode 13 charmed review and breakdown Hey y'all, it's your Twisted Girl Next Door here, and today I am doing a review and breakdown of Season 1, Episode 13 of Charmed on The CW. Okay, so if you're new here, this is how it goes. I give my overall thoughts of the episode, the happenings, as in what happened in the episode, and my thoughts about it. Ship talk, because I love talking about relationships. Best line, as in my favorite line of the episode. Predictions, because I like taking a guess even if I turn out wrong. Overall, this episode was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. I really like how this show has an ability to touch upon very relatable, relevant social issues in such a fun way while mixing in the supernatural with it. It's very smart. So big ups to them because I really enjoyed this episode. I don't think it necessarily played into the overall arching you know, big bad type of thing with Parker's, you know, father, which he seems to be the big bad of this season, and what's going on with that necessarily. But this was kind of one of those uh, monster of the week sort of episode that turned out not to be the monster that we thought it was. And I really like that kind of subverted thing that it did with that in particular. But I really enjoyed this episode. And I think we got a few revelations in terms of character introspection when it came to this particular episode. <laughs> The Manic Pixie. Okay, so there's a Manic Pixie on the loose, and it's killing white guys who, and they specifically said white guys, that's not me just, you know, saying that. Uh, they particularly killed white guys who are film students, aka, oh my gosh, hipsters. I totally had flashbacks to when I used to live in San Francisco. Hipster Central. Yeah, they totally had this on the nose when it came to what Chloe, who was the pixie, was dealing with in terms of the stereotype. Now, I'm not saying all white film guys are like that, but it was def it's definitely a prevalent stereotype, so they totally played up on that. It was a pixie. We find out that this film student white guy is basically controlling her because it got a hold of her heart and is making her take all out basically his competition. Yeah, basically they did succeed. The, the witches, the sisters did succeed in helping Chloe, who actually wasn't the monster in this case. It was actually Zach, the regular human white guy film student. In this, Mel also uses the Circana Hex, which surprises the sisters. Also, they find out in the midst of this, I thought they already kind of knew she was seeing Jada, but it seems like they didn't. So that happens in the midst of this main plot. They find out about that. She's using the hexing spell. So she's kind of breaking the rules of the mainstream rules when it comes to, you know, the witch world. And we see that as well. We also get a kind of new view of Maggie's powers, how she's able to, they didn't really explain exactly how it works, but she's able to, in sensing someone's thoughts, kind of get to the real thoughts and the real them outside of the spell, thus breaking a spell, which I guess is a pretty cool, um, you know, power that we discovered with her. I always like when we discover new powers when it comes to the sisters. If only they do that with Macy a bit more. So overall, I really loved this plot line. I am a sucker for meta. I am a sucker for one of the great things I love about horror, dark fantasy, dark superhero type of stories is I think its best ability is because it has the space to reflect real world situations in such a fantastical way. And they totally did that with this episode when it came to the question of agency of a person because Zach had taken away Chloe's agency the stereotype of, you know, the white endangered male, you know, like I love the line of, you know, oh, it's really hard to be a white guy right now. And them totally saying, no, that's not a thing. That's not actually a thing. Cannot forget these sisters are three women of color, not getting on my soapbox, but I do like that there are times when they do address racial dynamics, dynamics between men and women in our society. As someone who pays attention to narrative, as someone who is a huge, huge story nerd, when it comes, I just love a great story. That's why I do this channel. That's why I like talking about stories in film and TV. And that's why I do what I do here, along with writing original content, is 
because of the fact of the power of the story. And let's be real, the manic pixie dream girl trope is so done so much so much so much it's such a friggin trope in storylines usually written by certain types of uh people and so if you don't know the manic pixie dream girl is sort of this dream girl who she has no real motivation for herself of her agency except to make the main guy her love interest or her being his love interest happy and caring about his world and making him be carefree and things of that nature and it's so it's it's done so much in stories on film tv and books and things of that nature that it's usually a way to kind of make the main guy character who for all intents and purposes is probably some plain guy who isn't really interesting at all so he gets an interest an interesting love interest that being the manic pixie dream girl and it was so great that this show with this plot line kind of drove that home in a supernatural way and kind of subverted the trope and what that trope actually means when it comes to agency for not just women in the real world, but women characters in stories. You know, the fact that a lot of times you have these situations where women are created by storytellers just basically to be a plot point or some type of fuel for the male character. And I just love this show that's so filled with women power, uh, basically saying, to heck with that. Oh my gosh, the film Woke or Journey of a Straight White Guy Ally. Oh my gosh. Macy's Demon and I guess Galvin to the rescue. Okay, so basically, Macy is still trying to figure out how to get the demon blood out of her. We figure out when she's working with Parker's mom that Parker's, you know, demon DNA is, you know, very biological. While Ma Macy's is more so, it's more magical on the magical line, lane of things where it was introduced in her body. And so she was fully formed and then it was introduced. So it may be a different kind of mechanism to get it out. And so what happens is Galvin, you know, Mr. Really doesn't have much interesting stuff going for him. You know, they insert this situation where he can go to his uh, grandmother who conveniently was also something of a witch a w woman or some of some sort and so they find out that you know fast forward galvin has to go on a hero's journey in order to prove that he is worthy in order to save or more so because macy doesn't need saving necessarily more so to uh somehow be able to extract the demon blood outside of macy i'll talk about the final scene with them where her leading him up to the stairs uh in my ship talk but in terms of this subplot line it just feels so contrived right i mean galvin's gonna come on but even in that sense it's kind of like why out of everyone is galvin being made the person who can solve macy's problem and i put problem in that kind of thing uh quotations Yes, uh, because I don't really think it's a problem yet. I think Macy's doing very well. She's not necessarily half demon, right? She has some demon in her and she's been doing pretty well. So it's kind of like even this whole plot, plot line of Macy wanting to extract the demon blood from her seems a bit contrived. And I'm worried that it's only there basically to give Galvin something to do or to give them a reason to, you know, be, you know, for us to root for them in a way. And I don't really like when a story has like convoluted plot lines like that that try to make you do something in terms of instead of just telling the story and letting the viewer or the reader decide. And I think in this case, it just felt a little convoluted, uh, convoluted that Galvin is the person who may be able to save her. Like, come on. Jada and Mel are attacked. Yeah, that's basically the happening. Yeah, Jada and Mel were totally attacked. <laughs> and like going to see Jada's supposed parents some guys get out of a van and shoot her with an arrow this happened at the very end of the episode so that's all I got Maggie and Parker I'm really you know I really am liking Parker as an individual character I he's really grown on me I'm I'm actually glad that they've allowed him to be useful to the sisters outside of just him longing for or dealing with, you know, the whole thing with him and Maggie to the point where 
I like him as an individual. So much so that I'm wondering if I kind of ship him and Maggie or if I just want to keep him around. Because in terms of them being a relationship, yes, they did kiss at the end, which was nice. I mean, honestly, if we really think about it, there's nothing actually keeping them apart because he wants to be good. They're finding a serum for him to maybe continue to take kind of like in a Blade sort of way. If you remember Blade... For those of you who know that character, he was half vampire and had to keep taking a serum in order not to go full vampire. And I feel like this is pretty much what they're doing with Parker. They're just inserting it as a demon as opposed to a vampire. So if that's the case, there's really nothing keeping them apart at this point. So the conflict with them is kind of over. Although his father is still in the background controlling people, trying to somehow get them back together. So in a way, if we remember the last episode, Parker's father is getting his way in the fact of Maggie falling back in love with Parker. So although it's great, yes, there's no, you know, conflict. It's kind of the question of why does Parker's father want him and Maggie to get back together, right? Like, what's up with that? Galvin and Macy. I'm just kind of over that. Okay, so he says, I love you. Mind you, Macy doesn't say it back. She does not tell him back that she loves him. He tells her, and then she leads him up the stairs. Now, we know up to this point, Macy is a virgin. She has her V card still. And I'm just so worried that because this dude was just willing to go on a hero's journey for her, that she had sex with him. And, yeah, it's kind of like, really? I kind of... I mean, if they're going to do it that way, let it be that way, right? Let it be something that happens. She decides she doesn't make it a huge deal. It's just kind of like she never got around to having sex up to that point, I guess. And so she met someone and she ends up doing it fine. So it's not a big deal. I just hope that they don't, in the year 2019, equate her losing her virginity to this guy as him being her one true love, necessarily. And so that would just be so, I think, limited and narrow. And for a show that's so much about women power and all this other stuff that it tends to do so well, I think making it so that Macy ends up getting attached to this guy simply because of that moment would be not a good look. I think it's a bit contrived. I'm not feeling it. And I'm not saying I hope she didn't have sex with him. I'm hoping if she did do it, that they get it out of the way and we get to move on from that. Jada and Mel. Yeah, so they had the toothbrush talk. Yeah, you know the toothbrush talk? Should I leave my toothbrush over your house talk? Um, yeah, that was something. I ship them. I think they're a cute couple. I think more so, it's more so the actresses that have such chemistry that I'm so for because I'm not completely sure that Jada is completely, totally good. Although in this episode, she totally convinced me that she's good, but maybe that's a red herring and then she, you know, they were attacked at the end. But, uh, you know, they're getting closer. Jada wanted her to meet her parents And Mel eventually went. She was a little freaked out, but she eventually went. So I think that shows that Mel has come to care for her. There was a mention of Nico, but she's off. She was off screen for this episode. So I'm not really sure where they're going with Mel in terms of who is the one she cares for more, whether it's Nico or whether it's Jada. Um, I think what might be the deal breaker of this relationship is if Jada ends up being evil still. And I kind of hope they don't do that. I kind of hope she keeps her layers and her grayness. You're an overgrown lightning bug. I always enjoy a little sassy Macy. My prediction is that Galvin's going to fail. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's not really even wishful thinking. I just don't think he's going to be the one to do it. I think something else has to happen for Macy to end up getting the demon blood extracted from her. I just don't see them allowing this character who's not even like a main main character to be the one to do it necessarily okay so what did you think of the latest episode of charm did you like it are you wondering what the heck is going on with jada did you feel the manic pixie dream girl trope and did you love that it was annihilated in this episode let me know comment down below and also be sure to subscribe so that you are the first to know when i post my videos of all things horror dark fantasy and dark superhero Thanks for watching. Let's get creepy together.